Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Blue Metals. A few weeks back, I got tapped and asked to be a volunteer for a robotics project. Now, there is a competition. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can do a search for FRC 2017 or the FRC Challenge, which I believe is the first robotic community. Um, it's a really interesting uh, contest where high school students from all over the country get robotic components and they build their own bot and they use it to compete against other robots. Uh, my primary involvement is going to be doing light machine work, uh, cutting some custom parts on the plasma cam, things of that nature. Um, this is the logo for the competition. Uh, it's the Steamworks FRC or First Steamworks event. And uh, today's video, I'm going to be showing just a few things on the lathe and cutting out the pieces for the climbing device, which will allow the robot to ascend up a piece of rope. Um, this isn't one of my regularly scheduled videos. In fact, the, uh, this video is primarily to benefit the students that I'm working with at the high school. This right here is the shaft that was supplied with the gearbox for the robot. Now, the design that the kids came up with and that everyone seems to agree on, they want to have a hex shaft almost 10 inches long where the uh, pieces will be machined to fit the hex stock that'll grab onto the rope and pull the robot up. So the first thing I need to do is remake this portion of the shaft on the piece of hex stock I have here in the lathe. So first step in that operation is to of course face the part. This piece of stock wasn't perfectly straight, and even with that little bit of stick out, I have a little wobble. But for what this shaft is going to be, it's not really critical. As long as these fit into the gear housing, this just spins independently on its own, and there is going to be some flex in the shaft anyway. But uh, the two steps are to within two thousandths tolerance of the original part, and I just finished cutting this in. Uh, I have no idea what my grandfather may have used that for, but uh, I found it in the toolbox and it turned out to be exactly what I needed to cut that little seat in there. It's almost the perfect size. Alright folks, let's see how we did. Let's see here, get it in frame, that would be helpful. I think we did pretty good. All right, YouTube, so this is the design for uh, what we're calling the fingers. Now, what a lot of people are doing is they have a round shaft with pins in it, and as it spins, the pin will catch a loop at the bottom of the rope that the robot is supposed to climb, and as this winds, it'll just pull the robot up. Now, because we're using hex stock, we have six sides to work with, we're not using a round shaft, I'm gonna design something that looks just like this on the plasma cam. That way, you can put it anywhere you want on the shaft, and we're going to have spacers to space them out. Now, we don't have the final design of the robot fully in our heads yet of how everything is going to come together. That's why this shaft is very long. It's actually wider than the robot is now, and we're making everything adjustable. So as the guys bring this robot together, we can fine-tune things uh, and make sure everything fits where it needs to fit in the end. All right, YouTube, so I'm about five minutes into the Plasma Cam software and I'm ready to cut and see where we are.
All right, YouTube, so I'm done machining all parts, cleaning everything up. Uh, this is going to be the drive shaft that plugs into the electric motor and the gearing, and this will act as the winch that pulls the robot up. Um, these are the fingers, and everything that I made here today is pretty much being made so it can be adjustable right up until the last minute, just in case we have to change any of the design. All right, YouTube, so here's how the rope climb is going to work. As the robot approaches the rope, this shaft is going to be spinning. And the idea is one of these fingers will catch the loop on the end of the rope. And as the shaft continues to turn, it's simply going to coil up. And it's going to allow the robot to move up the rope. Okay folks, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Now if you happen to be a member of my robotics team or one of the many other teams around the country, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something about how these parts are manufactured for your bot. Uh, if you're a member of the general YouTube community, thank you for checking out the video. If you'd like more information on this, do a YouTube search for FRC Steamworks or FRC Competition 2017.